Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this video, we describe the ins and outs of load cell calibration. Calibration is, above all else, a procedure. A procedure to make sure that tension readouts match reality. Of course, tension numbers have no meaning unless they can be independently checked. This means tension must be displayed in engineering units of force, or much better yet for most cases, force per unit width, as we covered in the tension module of Web 101. Also covered there are all the guidelines you will ever need for tension settings for your particular materials and machine. Calibration is something like dishes. The job is never done. We should do the first calibration as a calculation during the design stage. Here, your builder should provide the calculated curves of output versus tension and or zero and gain settings in the service manual. Of course, garbage in, garbage out. The machine builder needs to do a first physical calibration in the shop along with other checks before the machine is disassembled and shipped. Before the last check is signed, a second field calibration should be done to check for any drift. Now comes the maintenance part. Electricians should check regularly to make sure the system does not drift. How often depends on the risk of consequences of drift and the trustworthiness that the system has already displayed. However, the front line of problem prevention is that every operator should be taught to check every day to make sure that the load cells read zero whenever the drive is shut down or the web is off. The reason for all of this effort is that you simply can't or shouldn't ever totally trust computers and instruments. You want to. You really need to make sure that a successful tension can be repeated tomorrow, the next day, the day after, and the year after, and if need be, on other machines and in other plants. The procedure is pretty simple. You first route a flexible rope, strap, or wire at the center of the rollers through the local web run around the load cell. One end is tied off, and the other end you apply the weights. Though it is possible to apply forces in other ways, weighted straps are by far the easiest and safest. The zero is first set with zero weight or tension. Then the gain is set with a weight corresponding to roughly maximum design tension or even maximum load cell rating. Repeating the check to see if zero and gain repeats is essential as we will see shortly. Finally, the work is never done until the paperwork is done. Maintenance should record all readings and results so that they can be checked against previous and future readings. This documentation is essential to establish the trustworthiness of the tension system in general and drift of the load cells in particular. With practice and planning, this entire procedure start to finish, including documentation, should take far less than one hour and the machine downtime less than 10 minutes with experience and planning. The first problem you might run into is that the zero and gain do not repeat with a second loading and unloading. There are two general ways this could happen. By far the most likely is that there is a mechanical problem with the setup procedure that involves friction in some way. Much less likely is an electrical issue, though it might happen if there were a bad component or wiring issues. Load cell drift is another problem you might run into. The first time that this happens, you might be inclined to recalibrate. The second time this happens, we are no longer dealing with bad luck or special causes. Do your troubleshooting to try and find the offending component and replace it. Finally, if this happens a third time, you should redesign. The system has proven itself to be untrustworthy and will fail again unless you use a more solid design. Trying to fix a load cell by recalibrating it is like trying to fix a flat tire by putting air into it. You just know what is going to happen. It's going to go flat again 
and again and again. As described earlier, one way to destroy the procedure and thus calibration is to have too much friction in the setup. You may encounter a routing that seems to need to go over a driven motor. Don't do it! Motors and gearbox friction will ruin the procedure. Instead, simulate the web run using a low friction pulley. Sharing a tension signal safely, so that an error on one instrument will not take down another, is especially important if the signal is to be used for control, i.e. drive controls. There are several ways to do this, but the simplest may be to have the signal go to a high-speed digital device, which then shares the values as needed. Another challenge that has no single answer, that is, what is the best amount of averaging or damping of the tension signal? For sure, the answer is near zero for any troubleshooting work. However, having readings fluctuate wildly do not serve the drive or the operator's needs very well. The last challenge we will take up here is only seen on situations where you don't have two load cells. Cantilevered machines, for example, will only have one cell, and some paper machine winders and other equipment will have more than two cells across the width. These challenges have custom calculation solutions that consider the width and the position of the web. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my Plant Practical series. If you have trouble with load cells or tension control or any other web handling problem, just give me a shout. I might just be able to help you sort it all out.